What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to the Trust the Bank podcast. Sorry it's been a few days since we've been able to get any uploads out on the channel. I've been traveling and sick. Um, the Ravens, it, unfortunate things have happened um, since the last time that we recorded. This is the last time you've seen either of us. Um, Lamar Jackson is down. Greg Roman still works for the Baltimore Ravens organization. Yeah, yeah. Still don't know anything about uh, David Ojabo. Still don't know anything about a lot of injuries. Ronnie Stanley's still hurt. A lot of things going on. Uh, a lot of a lot of bad things going on in this organization. One of the good things is they got the win. They were able to, uh, you know, squeak one out. You know, the, Brandon McManus went out there, trotted onto the field, thinking he was some dude named Justin Tucker. He was not. He did mm-hmm. not have the leg for a, a mere 62-yard game-winning field goal. Um, but... You know, in this in this kind of episode today, you know, if you guys are watching this on YouTube, go check out the Spotify uh, and Apple podcasts. You know, you can listen to all the segments right here. But we're going to talk about a few things. First off, Tyler Huntley season. That'll be the first segment. Second off, we're going to be talking about the next few games, you know, and, and, you know, it's a little bit continuation of Tyler Huntley. And, you know, what do we need? What do we need to win those next few games? You know, we've got the Steelers, the Browns, the Falcons, Steelers and the Bengals to end the season. You know, what? what's needed, uh, you know, if we don't have Lamar Jackson, you know, when we get Marcus Williams back, J.K. Dobbins back and things like that. Talking a little bit about those situations and potential playoff scenarios. Hey, maybe we don't win the division, but could that be a good thing? All those sorts of things in that segment. And finally, it's the first Steelers week of the year. We got to talk about it. Ravens, Steelers, rivalry, tradition, history, all that sort of stuff. But Joshua... Let's talk about it. Let's talk about Snoop. The man, you know, I hate to say it, but it's Tyler Huntley season again. Yeah. How are you feeling about that, man? I mean, I know everybody feel like Snoop is the second coming to Lamar Jackson. Um, I don't. Um, he definitely put up a great performance in the, um, in the preseason, but uh, I thought somebody else was better than him out of coming out of Oregon. Uh, Anthony Brown, just saying, just saying, just saying. But I mean, they plug in an offense where Snoop doesn't have to think a lot. He can just react to what's coming to him. I mean, you know, everybody will talk about, you know, well, they throw a lot of pass passing. Well, yeah, they do do a lot more passing with Tyler Huntley. He's the second string quarterback. I mean, he doesn't do everything that Lamar Jackson does. He's not as, he's not as, um, he doesn't have the panache or the showmanship as Lamar Jackson. He does, but he can get the job done. Um, do I feel like he can win all these games, though? Well, let's look back at last season. <laughs> he can, he gives you excitement. He does, but do I feel like he can win the games? Um, he can, but they don't make it happen. I I, I I feel like between his talent and Greg Gregory Roman's play calling. It's not enough fire to put us in a true winning position to seal the game. Yeah, and you know you got to give him credit for last week. He was able to march down the field, but again, the, the team put up ten points. That's you know that is kind of ridiculous that they've put up uh, in three of the last or two of the last three weeks. Ravens have scored one touchdown or fewer. They put up. Uh, one against uh, the Panthers. They put up one against the Broncos. That's it. This is an offense that has been struggling. The passing game's been atrocious. And now we're getting Tyler Huntley. And again, Tyler Huntley, Tyler Huntley is a fine backup um, to come into a game when you're winning by a lot. Mm-hmm. Tyler Huntley is a fine backup when you need someone to maybe finish out a game for you. Okay. Like, like, like we saw Lamar gets hurt against the Broncos and he can do that. I have no problem with his ability to do that. I think he's a fine backup for that reason. The reason why I, I'm not excited or, or enthusiastic about the next few games um, is because Tyler Huntley is a very limited player. You know, and I know a lot of people get have gotten mad at me over the last year or so, because we I talked about it like every week last year, uh, but Tyler Huntley isn't like, He's not a, a a good thrower of the football. He's accurate to you know in the short intermediate throw. Like he can dink and dunk, 
But yeah. that's really all he can do. He has, he may have the least arm strength I've ever seen out of a quarterback in his athletic prime, right? You know, because, you know, 45 year old Drew Brees or whatever, you know, noodle arm Matt Ryan, you know, that we see currently. Like, that's different. That, you know, yeah. the final year Peyton Manning, that was bad. But that's like, you're 45 years old. They weren't always like that. Yeah. Tyler Huntley does not have arm strength. Um, you know, I think the farthest throw we've ever seen him complete was 35 yards, maybe 40 yards in the air. I think it was the, I still call it Rashad Bateman's first touchdown of his career, but it wasn't um, against, I think, the Cleveland Browns. That was 30. It could have been 40 yards, maybe 40 yards in the air. And, like, that's the farthest we've ever seen him throw. And he is he is not accurate throwing the deep ball. You know, we talked about it uh, all the time. I was about to say, didn't he throw a deep ball interception in the Bills game when Lamar went down in the playoffs? Um, I don't think he threw the interception. He just overthrew Hollywood okay, by like okay, 40 okay. yards or something. Okay, he, okay. We used to talk about it all the time. The Hollywood Brown Tyler Huntley duo is the was the worst Never duo worked. the NFL had ever seen. Like Never worked. I don't know if they ever completed a pass. Like it was like no, Huntley steps so. back. He's got Hollywood Brown deep, and it's like, oh, he underthrew him, or oh, he totally overthrew him. Or he'd finally make a good throw, and it was like Hollywood dropped it. And you're like, oh man, this is terrible. Yeah. But he really doesn't throw the deep ball very much. Uh, because he just doesn't have the arm strength or the accuracy to do it. And with now how the Ravens passing game is, that's, I mean, that's part of the reason. Like Deshaun Jackson got us excited because it gave Lamar a deep threat to throw to. Also, shout out to Deshaun Jackson. He got uh, signed in the 53, um, which is big because now we don't have to elevate him every week. But that was the reason. It was like, wow, Lamar can finally throw that deep ball because that is a threat. Teams, I think, are slightly worried about Lamar hitting that deep ball. They're not worried about Tyler Huntley hitting the deep ball. Tyler Huntley is three yard, five yard checkdowns. And you guys, you guys can pull up the spread of his completions and his passing attempts. Almost, I would think, I think like 75 or 80% of his passes under 10 yards. He is a damn. I know people are going to probably uh, crucify me for this one. He is a mid tier Jacoby Brissett. He's a he's a in Jacoby Brissett is already mid tier, <laughs> like because if you look at Jacoby Brissett, Jacoby Brissett managed the games for mm -hmm. the, the season, and he got them wins. Yeah, he threw a deep ball every now and then, but mostly, what did he do? Either they was under the numbers, you know, hitching goes, uh, ten ten and out with ten and in slants, you know, dig dig route stuff like that. Same thing that you know Tyler Huntley does. And like I said, you know, when it comes to, you know, second string quarterbacks, their offensive coordinators usually, usually do not put a lot of stress and strain on those guys because sometimes they don't know the whole playbook. Even though uh, Tyler Huntley has been, been behind Lamar for the past two, three years, correct me if I'm wrong, Chad, um, yeah. correct me if I'm wrong, McConnell. Um, he, so he should have, he should have a good uh, – a grasp of the playbook. So, you know, I do feel like they trust him enough to run the regular plays that Lamar will usually do. But like I said, he doesn't have the, you know, the showmanship or the panache or the athleticism as Lamar Jackson. But I feel like, you know, he he can manage a game enough to win. It just comes down to him executing and also Gregory Roman calling enough good plays in order for us to actually score and get touchdowns. Yeah, and you know, also just want to give a really quick shout out. I just signed into our uh, podcast hosting. We we are at exactly ten thousand plays all time on the podcast. He's like on the nose. I literally just like logged into that. Nice. I was you know gotta get ready to upload it, but yeah, we're, we're at exactly ten thousand plays. So shout out to everybody. Uh, that's uh, Merry that's Christmas why. to us. <laughs> yeah, no man, like sweet. We we hit it. We got ten thousand plays, but. Like, you know, the thing is, you know, as a – like, I think Tyler Huntley, if he had really good weapons and a, a really good passing scheme, you know, we a really said that. good coach, could be great. What, what did we say – what what did I say last season, all last season? Let Tyler Huntley win yeah. so he can up his trade stock. Who did I say send him to? The people to the team up not I-95. <laughs> they got like, some it, of the, the best, some of the youngest weapons – when you put a mid-tier quarterback 
that that can get things done that's still in his young age, I feel like they can. I feel like he can take that team to the playoffs because he has enough talent around him. Yeah, and and so the the benefit that he does bring is the running game. You know, he he he's a good runner of the football. He's he's I would say he's top ten in the NFL as as a rushing quarterback. You know, he's probably on the you know close to ten side, but he's decent. He's got a little bit of wiggle. He's got some good top speed. Honestly, kind of really reminds me of an older RG three um, with his running ability. Okay. Uh, you know, obviously not prime RG three. Prime RG three was a menace. That dude, that may have been he may have been the fastest quarterback in the history of the NFL in straight line speed. Um, it's probably him or Vic. But Tyler Huntley does add value in the running game. But for Greg Roman's running game, you need a quarterback that is insanely good to make the offensive scheme work that Greg Roman tries to run. Lamar Jackson is that level to where it's like, okay, the defense has to play the run so hard to where Lamar Jackson can make the poor weapons work. Right. You know, he can hit those deep balls, hit them for intermediate, still be explosive, even though the weapons aren't very good because they're playing the run so hard. Tyler Huntley, you were okay with letting Tyler Huntley run on you. You are not okay with having Lamar Jackson run on you. It's too different. And you have to, in the NFL, you have to prove that. It, that's not something where you get drafted and teams go, we're never going to let this guy run the ball. This was something when Lamar Jackson came into the league, teams were letting Lamar run initially. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, he first started off and it was like, okay, okay. And then 2019, they were like, okay, yeah, we need to stop this right now. Um, we need to stop this. And so then, then the passing game started to dominate. That's how he led the league of touchdown passes. They sold out, stopped the run, boom, explosive play, explosive play. You see it with all these young quarterbacks, right? You know, Justin Fields, now they're finally starting to catch on. Do not let him run. But for the first year and a half of his career, it wasn't like that. It was like, okay, yeah. He's made some plays, but he hasn't looked that good running the ball. He's looked decent, but, like, let's just stop the pass. If we stop the pass, we're going to win. All of a sudden, he starts breaking them, right? 50, 50, 50, 50 50-yard touchdown runs, like, week to week to week to week to week. My fantasy team is very appreciative. He'd be helping my fantasy team, man. Um, But now teams are like, okay, stop the Justin Fields run first, then we'll stop the pass. Yeah, Tyler Huntley is still in the stage where they are. All right, let's just stop the pass. If he wants to run, that's fine. He's not going to go crazy. Mm. He may have 20 rushing attempts for 80 yards, but teams will live with that because what Lamar does is he has seven rushing attempts for 80 yards. Then he has all these completions. Tyler Huntley is just like, yeah, I'm just going to check the ball down, check the ball down. I'm not going to run. In... You know, I don't have the I don't really have the faith that he is going to become this, oh my gosh, we gotta stop Tyler Huntley from running type of player. Yeah. I, I don't think he has that type of running ability. I don't think he has the straight line speed. I think he's he's good enough, right? You know, Russell Wilson was don't let him escape from the pocket. It wasn't don't let him run. Yeah, with him, he just had that. Oh uh, yeah, McConnell, he's he's getting better. He's you know he's under the weather, you know. But um, <laughs> that was a tough sentence to get out, man. <laughs> but when we, I mean, when we talk about Russell Wilson, him and we can put him and Kyler Murray in the same in the same uh, boat, you know, because they don't use their running ability first. They they more you know a pass centric type of quarterbacks. I mean, with um. Russell Wilson coming out of NC State, and either and even with Kyler Murray coming out of OU, those those offenses were built, you know, on the strength of their arm. They wasn't built on just their whole athletic ability. So you know, it's like a, a element of surprise. Something I've been wanting. Something I've been wanting for uh, Lamar Jackson. You know, as he continues to grow in the NFL and continue, you know, the um, the drive out his legacy as a QB in the NFL as well. You know, but you know, with Gregory Roman at the helm. And having you know one of those, one of those X factor type of players, because that's the same thing that happened with you know Colin Kaepernick, Tyrod Taylor, and now Lamar Jackson just perfecting you know 
what we really didn't see. We only saw glimpses of what uh, of what this uh, great uh, Russian coordinator can do in uh, San Francisco. We saw another glimpse of it. You know, when he was in Buffalo, he had Sammy Watkins and Tyrod Taylor. And um, I forgot who the running back was. But now, you know. Um, Shady. Oh, man. Oh, man. Shady McCoy. No reason. No reason was working. <laughs> the man was a dog. So now, you know, you bring it to, you know, the generation of another up-and-coming X-Factor type of player that can change the game in just of an instant with Lamar Jackson. So, you know, everybody is so – everybody can say, you know, the season is over because Lamar Jackson's hurt. And may possibly could be. People, people are probably saying, you know, hey, we got Snoop, man, don't worry. He's a second coming to Lamar Jackson. I don't know about that. That's a stretch. Could he possibly win a game or two to put us in a playoff contention? Well, continue having us in playoff contention? Maybe. We just have to see what, which Ravens come out this uh, next couple of Sundays and play. I mean, the thing is, uh, once once if we see Snoop doing good, Ravens Nation supports Snoop and don't say, oh, let's just uh, F Lamar Jackson. We don't, need to, we don't need to worry about bringing him back or signing him back to the team or things of the, na- na- things of the nature. We have Snoop. We had Tyler Snoop Huntley. You know, he he's our savior and stuff like that. Just don't be those type of fans because we are approaching Snoop season. 